Hello YouTube, Pharaoh again. I uh, just want to go over a few talking points and then um, that's it. Just got a few things to talk about this time. Sorry, I haven't made a video in a while. I've been kind of busy with some other projects and other things I had to do. I apologize for that. I'll try to be better about getting videos out on time. Uh, first thing I want to address in the video is um, when I started looking into religion, you know, I'm trying to understand where it came from. You know, how did humans all over the globe that were never weren't really connected uh, in communication wise, how did they come up with this concept of, uh, of religion and gods and deities and all this stuff that seems to be prevalent throughout uh, human society uh, for centuries, millennia, what have you. Um, what it really basically boils down to is that the human mind hates answering a question with the phrase, I don't know. Um, it, that's that's all it boils down to. Because the human brain hates answering its questions with "I don't know," um, it since it's a very creative brain, it's it's very intellectual brain, has uh, creativity skills, all this stuff. Uh, it will invent its own reason, whether it be the right reason or the wrong reason, for whatever question it is asking, because it just can't sit there with the with not having an answer. Human brain, brain won't accept uh, no answers. It has to have some type of answer. I don't know is out of the question in the human brain. So it will create. It will it will fantasize about uh, the possibilities and then it'll pick the most likely uh, scenario that is created in its own head as the actual answer until something better comes along. Um, if you've ever been camping in the woods um, you know, like late at night sometimes, so I'll give you an example, I was, I was camping, it was, it was uh, really dark out in the middle of nowhere, and I awoke to some noises, um, some rustling in, the, in some nearby bushes, and uh, my heart immediately started to pound, because I'm out in the woods where the ferocious creatures are. Now, the first thing my brain did was ask, what's making that noise? And my eyes couldn't see because it was too dark, so it had to bring in information through my ears and sort of create whatever was making the noise in my creative brain. And uh, so there, there's a clear example of, of, of my brain clearly making up an answer for something that may or may not be true. It's just going off possibilities off of its creative actions. So I, you know, I hear scratching and rustling and a little snarling, and you know, my my brain is picturing this like, well, you know, maybe it's a bear or you know, it's a cougar or a wolf or something ferocious, and it's got sharp teeth and it's gonna fucking eat me. That's what my brain was formulating. Um, so I began to get more and more panic stricken as as the noises got closer and closer to me because I thought it was about to be something's meal. Um, lo and hold my surprise, what came out of the bushes was in fact the most feared animal in the forest. It was a skunk. A very big skunk. Luckily it wasn't interested in me and it just went about its regular normal nighttime activities and left me alone. But uh, there's an example of how your brain can just run amok with ideas that aren't even correct because it just doesn't know. Uh, next talking point I wanted to get onto was Prop 8 was overturned. Thank you, justice system, for working. Um, a lot of people, a lot of the Christians are pissed off about this because they think it was, you know, all political or something like that, or, or the government's trying to, you know, shit on the voter and say, you know, we don't want to listen to the voters. We don't care what the majority says. That's not at all the way it works. If if someone makes a law, if someone passes a law via voters that is illegal, the Constitution stops it from progressing, from keep work, from it, from keep working. Okay, and and that's exactly what happened here. Okay, you can't strip someone's rights away, you know, that are given to them in the Constitution. The only way you can make gay marriage illegal is to go back and amend the Constitution to say so. You can't just make a law saying so. You have to change the Constitution before it can become a legal action. And uh, some people think that the, it, it, 
doesn't get uh, uh, the, the courts shouldn't have a say because it's it's a religion marriage is a religious thing well I'm sorry to inform you of this but it's not okay marriage is something that is given by two people by the state anybody who's been married knows that before you get married you have to go to the courthouse and apply for a marriage license okay it is the state that grants you your marriage not your church and because it's the state that grants you your marriage under the 14th Amendment uh, Equal Protection Clause, it says basically that you are you have equal rights due to any government action. Okay, now you can make um, things that are unconstitutional in private sectors. Like I could make a country club where only straight people could play golf there, and that's legal because that's private sector. That's not government. That's not the state. Okay, I could I could make my own hamburger joint where I could only, you know, sell hamburgers to black people. That's, that could be totally legal. It's a private thing. Um, so I just, I just want to get my two cents in on the whole Prop 8 thing. And uh, lastly, I have one more thing. I have, a, I have a newspaper article here. I clipped out a newspaper. I'm not going to read you the whole thing because it's kind of long-winded, but the, the title of it is uh, Big Difference Between Christ and Christianity. And it got my attention. There's a, there's a woman uh, that the article is talking about, how she is not giving up her faith. She's still going to read the Bible and believe in God, you know, and, and uh, all that stuff. But she's not going to go to church anymore. She's not going to participate with church. And she thinks the church is wholly wrong, uh, which I agree with. If, if people want to just believe whatever they want to believe and just do away with organized religion, I would be a, a much happier person. So I'm just going to read you a little uh, snippet from her about why she is no longer going to be going to church and she's just going to have her own personal belief. <clears throat> she wrote, I refuse to be anti-gay. I refuse to be anti-feminist. I refuse to be anti-artificial birth control. I refuse to be anti-democrat. I refuse to be anti-secular humanism. I refuse to be anti-science. I refuse to be anti-life. Basically, the whole article is talking about how the church has taken up certain political positions, and that is why people are walking away from the church. It even gives the statistics for uh, uh, the number of people, how Christianity has dropped 10% in the, in the last few years, and, and uh, people with no particular belief system or, or atheists, though that's on the rise, is because the church is no longer uh, concerned with moral good doings it is more concerned with political ideals you know and uh, what kind of food you should eat and what kind of person you should make love to those sorts of things they're it's it's getting too much into politics it's affecting too much of their everyday lives and they're sick of it so they're just leaving so it's a good article uh, so yeah that's my rant for now. I thank you for watching. If you dig what I do, hit that button right up there and subscribe. Or if you just like the video but you don't want to be bothered by me on a semi-regular basis, just hit the like button down there. It's the one with the little thumbs up thing. And if you think I'm a fucking crackpot and you hate my guts, just thumbs down me, okay? I'm totally cool with the democratic system. So uh, I won't feel bad if you send me messages saying I'm going to burn in hell or stuff because I'm not, I'm not really not going to burn in hell. So go ahead with that. Thanks for watching.